si bien es cierto que el pueblo salvadoreño está padeciendo eh, eh, condiciones eh, eh, sumamente críticas y, y está sufriendo una represión como nunca se había visto en El Salvador desde 1932, queremos nosotros eh, decirle al mundo entero que este pueblo ya no está pidiendo compasión ni lástima. Este pueblo está dispuesto a luchar por forjar su propio destino y está con un ánimo combativo como nunca lo había tenido y creo yo, pues, repito, eh, consciente de que solo él y únicamente él puede eh, liberarse en, en forma definitiva. On November 27, 1980, Enrique Alvarez and five leaders of the Democratic Revolutionary Front were kidnapped while preparing for a press conference in downtown San Salvador. Their tortured and mutilated bodies were found within hours. Although eyewitnesses reported seeing 200 uniformed troops at the site of the kidnapping, security forces denied any involvement. What sort of conditions do you say that a war exists? It seems that, you know, the government's not going to say there's a civil war. And the people just feel that, yeah, there is no defense. There's no place to go and complain against the death squad. Well, the colonel of the local regiment said to me the other day that the church is indirectly subversive because it's on the side of the weak. One month after this interview, the bodies of Ida Ford and three other American churchwomen were found in a shallow grave in El Salvador. reports of their tragic deaths, I joined a, a mass here at St. Patrick's Cathedral and extended sympathy and assurance of prayers to the families, friends, and co-workers of those who were killed, especially to our own Mary Noel sisters. Together we expressed our oneness with our brothers and sisters in El Salvador who are oppressed. Había algunos que consideraban que ese trabajo que ellas ejercían era un trabajo subversivo, como muy frecuentemente sucede que todo aquel que se esfuerza por una liberación integral del pueblo, por estar muy cerca de los más necesitados, se interprete ese trabajo como algo que no debería de hacerse entre nosotros. ¿Usted cree que las fuerzas de seguridad están envolvidas en asesinar a las monjas? Yo creo que eh, lo que aquí se hace siempre tiene alguna connivencia con las autoridades. Outrage over the murder of the four missionaries led to the cutoff of all U.S. economic and military aid pending an investigation. On December 7th, President Carter sent Special Envoy William R. Rogers on a fact-finding mission to El Salvador. Would you outline your mission to El Salvador and tell us what you're looking for? Yes, whether or not uh, uh, the government is in any way implicated either before or after the murders in the murders will be one of the issues we'll be looking into. Uh, and secondly, what this incident and other incidents suggest about uh, the future of this particular government in Salvador. After Roger's mission, the government was hastily reshuffled. Jose Napoleon Duarte was installed as president, and all economic aid was immediately resumed. 
despite admissions by the U.S. ambassador that no meaningful investigation was or is taking place. In January 1981, military aid was also resumed and later escalated to include lethal weaponry. Well, it's history who said that. I'm the first civilian president in 50 years. I need the support of the army. There's no question about that. But most of all, I need the support of the people. The 56 U.S. military advisors in El Salvador today include two counterinsurgency teams who assist the Salvadoran armed forces in planning specific missions. In addition, 15 counterinsurgency specialists are training a quick reaction team of 2,000 troops. From 1971 to the present, the U.S. has trained more than 600 Salvadoran military officers. In 15 months, from January 1980 to March 1981, $35 million has been spent in military aid for El Salvador, more than twice what was spent in the previous decade. El único camino que nos queda es que todo lo, el pueblo impulse la revolución como lo está haciendo en estos momentitos. En estos momentitos todos, todo el mundo se está incorporando, inclusive los que no querían creer. Pero como el enemigo ahorita se ha vuelto loco y está matando inclusive hasta los que lo apoyaban a él, Así es que ahora esta gente también se está incorporando. Entonces ahorita pues me parece que están preparando las últimas condiciones para decidir el destino de nuestro pueblo. Porque esta gente pues sí, inclusive está dispuesta a, a todo, pues hasta morirse por tal de que los demás puedan vivir un mundo mejor. Sencillamente. Parte de guerra número uno, del Frente Farabundo Martí para la Liberación Nacional, saluda revolucionariamente a nuestro heroico pueblo que en estos momentos libra con gran valentía fuertes combates contra la asesina Junta Militar Democristiana, la oligarquía y el imperialismo. Esta guerra del pueblo ya ha llegado a su etapa final con el impulso de la ofensiva general. Es dentro de este marco que el Frente para Central José Luis... After more than 10 years of organizing and preparation, five revolutionary groups united to form the FMLN, the Farabundo Marti National Liberation Forces, and launched a general offensive on January 10, 1981. At that time, the FMLN was still an army in formation. Nevertheless, they were able to mount military operations and attack army barracks in two-thirds of the country, forcing government troops to retreat back to the cities.
cuál es el, el objetivo? Eh, la comandancia, comandancia ah, sí. de, okay. del, ex, Entiendo, del ahorita, sí. escuadrón de la muerte. Ajá. Es lo mismo ¿Así? que Guardia Nacional y Policía Nacional y todo. Although the U.S. press called the general offensive a failure, by July, the FMLN had established control over 19 zones in the northern, eastern, and southeastern parts of the country. La gente no, no pierde pues la combatividad. O sea, la gente aquí está con el espíritu en alto. ¿Y cómo te parece el moral del ejército del enemigo? Ah, el moral del ejército del enemigo, pues ahorita está votado, ¿verdad? Porque son pobres igual que todos nosotros, ¿verdad? La gente del ejército es campesina, ¿verdad? que ellos para prestar servicio militar aquí en nuestro país, ellos los agarran pues como que son perros. ¿verdad? ¿Cuántos diferentes tipos de armas tienes aquí? Y hay par, carabinas, punto .30, M30, y estas pocas armas que hemos logrado, como te digo, han, han sido en combate, pues, quitando al enemigo. Aquí la clase de armas, pues más que todo el arma, el arma popular es la que se ocupa aquí. Bueno, en estos momentos nos encontramos en, en un pequeño taller de, de explosivos, donde se elaboran estas clases de materiales, eh, donde son eh, la mina antitanque, cargas de explosivos, granadas de contacto, granadas de mecha. Bien. Vemos allá ¿vea? un molino donde se muele algún material porque se necesita que vaya fino. It was the worldwide communist network which intervened in El Salvador, which from all over the world, from Vietnam and Ethiopia and Eastern Europe through Cuba and Nicaragua, supplied an immense amount of armament of guns and bullets to their friends in El Salvador. Thank you. Today, the Department of State is, reduce, is, uh, is releasing two documents uh, entitled Communist Interference in El Salvador. The first is uh, a special report. It's a narrative form. Para nosotros no nos ha extrañado que en este momento en donde realmente se ha dado a conocer el poderío militar y popular que nuestro pueblo logró acumular en los últimos 10 años de lucha, se esté argumentando que necesariamente ese armamento tiene que venir de Cuba y de la Unión Soviética y no puede venir de otros lugares, inclusive de los mismos Estados Unidos. I'm afraid that because many of our intelligence sources are very sensitive that I can't really go into detail because both what I don't say and what I say could be used as a way of interfering with our intelligence, and in this case, more than most, we don't have any too much intelligence. I think the situation is clearly a situation in which Cuban activity has reached a peak that is no longer acceptable in this hemisphere, whether it be in El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, or any other of our sovereign republics. Actually, for 20 years, we've been hearing that Castro was sending people into El Salvador. I heard it when I was there, that all the time, any time that there was any disorder uh, among the hungry peasants, among the people who were uh, discontented or out of thought that they could live a little better than they, they were living, any time this happened, someone would come to the embassy and say, uh, the Cubans have landed. Uh, could you give us some indication as to the amount of Cuban uh, advisors, personnel, if any, that are in the country? We do not know of any Cubans in El Salvador either training or fighting or whatever they might How be doing. How about any other country? Russia, Vietnam? No, there are no people from those countries there. 
si aún pues tienen que recurrir al invento y a la malicia para querer hacer ver una intervención que no existe cuando lo que está evidente en la intervención norteamericana. Uh, we only have uh, something like 75 Americans including the 20 Marines guarding the embassy in El Salvador. That's a lot less than we have in a majority of countries around the world in one way or another. En El Salvador, 54 asesores militares significan cuantitativamente más del 10% de toda la oficialidad del ejército salvadoreño, que no son más de 500 oficiales. There's no way you can win that revolution militarily unless you make a decision to wipe out 25% of the population. But it seems that people are so concerned because of the bad experience of Vietnam that if we send one airplane, that if we send one soldier someplace, we are somehow starting another Vietnam. I know the president has no intention of sending, uh, uh, making a, sending troops into Salvador, get us involved in a Vietnam thing, but I don't think Johnson did either. And I feel very strongly about it because my son went there, the only son of any congressman or senator who fought there in ground combat and was wounded in the entire 10 years of the war. Certainly there's no one in the United States that wants to get into a war. I'm worried about whether this is being done not because it's needed, but because we have an administration that's made a bunch of macho statements and now feels that it ought to follow through on them. What we're doing in going to the aid of a government that asked that aid of a neighboring country and a friendly country in our hemisphere is try to halt the infiltration into the Americas by terrorists, by outside interference, and those who aren't just aiming at El Salvador, but I think are aiming at uh, the whole of Central and possibly later South America, and I'm sure eventually North America, but uh, this is what we're doing. And having watched the first six weeks of this administration's policy in Central America, I have to say that I'm very skeptical about the willingness of the administration to be open and honest with itself and with the American people about the true source of the violence in El Salvador. I think we're isolating ourselves internationally. I think we're being arrogant. I think we're acting in a way that is unworthy of the best traditions of our own country. And I think we're just plain wrong. Aquí lo único que sentimos nosotros es que se anuncia mucho la intervención norteamericana. Y nosotros pedimos a los pueblos del mundo y a los gobiernos del mundo que que nos ayuden, que se solidaricen con nosotros para que detengan esa intervención y así nosotros nos dejen en paz haciendo nuestro propio destino. Protest against the resumption of military aid to the junta was raised all across the United States. One of the first acts of solidarity was the boycott of all military cargo to El Salvador by the International Longshoremen and Warehousemen's Union. At the present time, the trade union uh, movement of El Salvador has been totally smashed by the, uh, the junta that uh, all of us are paying for. One of the basic contradictions is it is jobs that are being exported out of this country into the cheap labor markets. And I just would like to see unions, you know, take another look at a lot of the progressive movements that are, that are uh, erupting around the world. And without a knee-jerk reaction, it swallowed a line that uh, the employer gives us in the public that if somebody wants to feed their family, somebody wants their children to go to school, somebody wants decent housing, decent wages, safety on the job, well, then they got to be a whole bunch of commies. I mean, that's about the line that we've been getting for about 25 years, and I think it's time everybody got hip to that business. That's my view.
The North American people have a tremendous historical task on their shoulders. You must not rest until the last bullet 